Hey everyone, sorry I couldn't make this one live, but um, I at least have a premiere so you can comment in the live chat and it's, you know, premiering at the same time that it would normally be live. Basically the only difference is I can interact with your comments in the video itself, but I can still reply to your comments in the premiere. So um, I also check the comment section after it's published. For anyone who's new, this is a series that I do every Friday at 8 p.m. called Fallen World. It's kind of like educational. I just cover different topics. And then on my other channel, link to that channel is always in the description. Um, on that channel on Sundays at 8 p.m., I do longer live streams going more in depth, sometimes on the same topics I cover here, sometimes an unrelated topic. Um, but they're longer and they're more casual, where this is more focused and educational and that one's called Just Between Us. So Fallen World and Just Between Us. My other channel is called Philosophical Psychology, and, you know, Just Between Us isn't the only thing you'll find on that channel, but it's a newer series that I started, so that's, lately that's all I've been doing. But in general, there's, like, psychology-related videos on there. So um, today I want to talk about the afterlife. I think Everyone wonders what happens when you die. It's a obviously super common question. Some people think they know. And my favorite comedian, George Carlin, joked that, you know, he, he, he talked about what happens when you die. And he goes, I think you go wherever you think you're going to go. And he goes, you, you know, that, that old that old guy sitting on the porch going, oh, don't you worry about me. I'm going to hell. That's where he's going. <laughs> he's going to hell. And, you know, the people who think they're going to heaven go to heaven, and people who think this happens or that happens, you know. And I think that's kind of funny, and I think there's a little bit of truth in that, um, because it, it does kind of feel like it's whatever, whatever you want it to be, whatever you think it is. But I will tell you the truth. Um, there is more than just what you see. I know that people sometimes believe there is no afterlife, that you just cease to exist. But then that begs the question, what is you in the first place? So before I explain what I think the afterlife is, let me explain why I believe there is an afterlife. I don't like to take anything at face value. I don't like to just hear someone say something and say, oh, that must be true then. Um, what I do is usually I, I use my intuition to kind of guide me through the day. And sometimes I just know something is wrong or I know something is true and I don't know why. I'm like, I know this has to be true, or I, that this doesn't feel right, or this does feel right, or whatever it is, and I don't know why, but I can always figure it out later. There's always a perfectly logical explanation. You never just have to take anybody's word for it. However, you know, in situations where you don't have time to do all the math and figure out why it's wrong, it is good to know if you need to maybe make a quick left turn in traffic and then you avoided an accident and you didn't know why. If you sat there trying to figure out, well, it doesn't make sense to make a left turn, you know, that, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Sometimes you just got to trust your instincts. Um, but there is still logic when it comes to figuring out the truth and the way that things work. It, there's like a mathematical way to go about it, and I try to do that. So first I figured out what I believed based on my intuition, then I figured out how it makes sense and, and why that has to be true. So I'm going to narrow it down for you the way that I figured it out. Um, basically, if you think of everything that exists having some sort of purpose or meaning, it really doesn't make sense without a subjective experience. When you, take the, when you take the subjective experience out of it, consciousness, like a human perspective, or any, any kind of perspective of a living thing, anything that has a conscience, um, it just becomes meaningless, becomes kind of random, and there's actually no real proof of its existence at all. When you, you know, so it, to suggest that there's no afterlife, to suggest that we are just our bodies, is, you know, what you're saying, so that when your body dies, you die, because, you know, your consciousness is just a trick of the mind. It isn't, it's, you know, it's just like electronic stuff firing off, and it doesn't actually mean that you are something beyond just your physical body. Everything about you is physical, and it's all just meaningless. It's just a bunch of random, meaningless chaos, and the universe is just random, crazy things happening for no reason. It just is, and, and you know, eventually it won't be, and you won't be, and nothing will matter, and that, that is a belief system that I kind of understand, but I feel like 
it's missing something. There's a great example that I reference a lot from the movie Lucy. Um, I don't agree with everything in that movie. It is science fiction, but there was one scene where I thought she demonstrated something really interesting. She was trying to make a point about time or something. I don't know. But she, what she did was she showed an image of a car on a loop just speeding down a road, just kind of like this. <laughs> and uh, she sped it up and you couldn't see the car as much. And then she sped it up times infinity and the car was completely gone. And she, she, and she said, so what proof do we have of its existence? And then the conclusion she drew was something like time is unity or something, I don't know. But my conclusion from that is that the only proof we have of existence is our perspective. Because even if you speed the image up times infinity and you can't see the car anymore, you could see the car if you're the one driving the car. If you're behind the wheel, it doesn't matter how fast the car is going because you're behind the wheel. So the only way that the car would look like it didn't exist is if you zoom out and you look at it from an objective perspective and you speed it up times infinity. Then, you know, the universe might as well not even exist. Literally the only proof we have of existence of anything is us. So you could say, you know, are we just a, a, a trick of the mind? It's actually the other way around. Um, everything else is f from within not we're from outside. So it's the other way around. Um, and it's it's sort of like we, our brains, our consciousness exists in, in a dimension of its own. And um, everything is kind of a metaphor in that sense. Everything that we do, it's, it's for the conscious. There's nothing that exists in the universe that isn't in some way, shape, or form serving some conscious being somewhere. There's nothing that just exists f for complete random no reason at all. Um, and I, I really have not seen any proof to contradict that statement. So I feel confident saying that. I think it makes sense. Um, and if someday somebody proves that there is something that exists for no reason, we'll go from there. We'll examine it. But I don't think that's even possible. I would, I would I bet my life that that's never going to happen. Um, so anyway, speaking of betting my life, let's talk about the afterlife. If at this point, if you're still with me, and there is a live chat, so if I lost you, comment, let me know where I lost you if you're confused. Um, if you're not watching live, leave a comment and I'll, I'll reply to you. And if you do want to go more in depth, and discuss this with me again. I'm going live on Sunday at 8 p.m., so we should be able to do it there. Um, I think I'm going to be discussing a different topic on Sunday, but, you know, I'll be totally ha happy if you bring this up. It won't be a problem. Like I said, just between us is more open-ended. But fallen world, I want to be direct, so let's just get to the point. Um, assuming that you're following me with the logic that we are, you know, not just our you know, we're more than our bodies, then I think it follows that when our bodies die, there is still an experience to be had, you know, and that's really all that, that existence is about. It's about experience because experience, and there's a lot of evidence to back this up, is the only way to learn. You need experience. Otherwise, you can never learn anything. People can't just go sit in a classroom and be told certain things. Sometimes, you have to experience it yourself. And everyone who's had a lot of experience in life, especially traumatic experience, will tell you that the most they've grown, the most that they've evolved as a person and increased their empathy and compassion for other people and become more educated and just more in harmony with the universe and with everything that exists came from their experiences, not from what someone told them. So that is why we're here having a human experience. The whole point of the human experience is to learn, to grow, to evolve. And that's, in, in my opinion, I think the human experience is one of many. We live in a, in a giant universe with infinite possibilities, infinite space, and infinite time. And that leaves room for anything. So there are always going to be more steps to growth. I think if you're interested in seeing what happens when you die, 
a pretty accurate representation of the afterlife is a movie by Albert Brooks with Meryl Streep called Defending Your Life. That I, I mention that a lot because it's a really accurate movie. You know, when I watched it, I, I at first was being overly critical of it and saying, oh, this is too, like, this isn't literally what happens when you die. But then I thought about it and again, I was like, well, obviously for the sake of a movie, <laughs> they had to make it a little more um, engaging, but it is shockingly accurate. Based on everything I've learned, it, it's spot on in so many ways. And um, it, it's, it's really a good way to get an idea of what happens when we die. So definitely go check that out. Um, but basically what happens is you have this, this kind of a greater purpose to continue evolving and growing. You never reach a point where you end. So anybody who believes in like heaven or hell as a place to just end up and then you're either playing and having fun forever or you're being tortured and punished and burning forever, none of that is accurate because you're never going to reach a point where you're just done, where there's nothing left to do, where you're like, all right, I did it. I beat life, put the flag in the top of the mountain. Now what? What do you just stand at the top of the mountain forever? there's always something else to do. You go on to what's next and then more and more and more. So it's never just over. Um, you're never just sitting around with nothing to do. And, excuse me, just bump the table with my hand. And, you know, coming from the perspective of, I, you know, I've, I've given people like psychic mediumship readings. I've, you know, talked to dead people. And I've also learned a lot from psychic mediums. Some of them disagree. Um, but there is one, her name's Ivy Rivera, her YouTube channel is at Ask Ivy, just, you know, A-S-K-I-V-Y, pretty easy. Um, she has a ton of really interesting content, and I've met her in person, I feel like, you know, I consider her a friend, casual friend, we're not like, you know, close, but we, we definitely, I think, consider each other friends. And I feel like I can trust her. That was the first impression I got when I found her was that it was someone who wasn't going to sugarcoat anything, someone who actually took the time to study and understand things and really had been through quite a, a bun been through the ringer herself and didn't have any, any room for nonsense anymore. So I, c I can relate to that because I love studying the universe and figuring things out and I immediately felt like she she thinks in a really similar way to the way I think. And everything she said made complete sense. So even though there are a lot of psychic mediums who, excuse me, psychic mediums who disagree on what happens when you die, if you listen to what they say, there are a lot of similarities. So you can kind of see where the differences might be. It's kind of like religion, how there are a lot of accurate teachings in religion, but they all differ slightly. So every religion contains truth but you know over time mistranslations um you know and you also have to consider it was still written by a human being at some point so i just my theory is that the humans who were originally given the scriptures and did the different religions probably were just channeling it intuitively they were just psychic mediums everybody's a psychic medium technically you know, everybody has those abilities. Like I mentioned, if, you know, you're turning in traffic and stuff, you use them to survive and you don't even realize it. And that's not, that's not an instinct. That's not coming from a logical thought that you had. It's just your intuition, your higher mind, and sometimes your guides, your angels, your ancestors, reaching out and protecting you, giving you guidance. So how does that work? Um, let, me, let me first finish what I was saying. I was talking about something else. Oh yeah, I was talking about religion and mediums. So you know, religion, they they all have an accurate perspective. They're getting the information, but then they write it down and they maybe add their own f flair on it, or maybe they, it's just their perspective. It's another thing that I've been learning a lot lately is perspective is everything. Kind of like how I mentioned um, everything is subjective. It is 100% accurate. And that's why it's so important that we embrace our uniqueness, our individu individuality, and realize that we have something unique to offer the world. We shouldn't just keep it to ourselves and try to conform and blend in. That's not helpful. It's not doing you any favors. It's not doing anybody else any favors because they're not getting whatever you would have had to offer if you had actually looked and figured out what's what actually makes you different from other people. That's, that's your power is what makes you different. So, you know, 
but people people don't know that people get arrogant and they want to believe that what they believe is what everyone should believe so they try to control other people and that's i think what happened with religion somebody figured out something got a piece of the puzzle that's wonderful share it with the group but instead everybody around different parts of the world figured out different pieces of the puzzle and instead of them all coming together and sharing they all found out about each other's different beliefs and just decided to attack and kill each other eh, and that's still going on to this day people are not necessarily having as many wars as we used to but there is still a lot of death based on religious hatred and you know ethnic groups and shit like that people are just you know we have a problem of um not not accepting what we don't know you know humbling yourself and saying i, I guess i don't know it's okay not to know and because we think we know it comforts us it's an ego thing it's about fear and control that's what ego is um then we try to control other people and then we we end up creating a giant mess so that's what happened with religion not only was it originally written in a way that wasn't perfect in the first place but then you know centuries passed and it was translated a bunch of different times and interpreted through generations and you know different copies and different denominations of whatever you know all sorts of things happened to these different religions and now nobody can agree on what's true and nobody's willing to step step back and say maybe everybody has a little bit right and a little bit wrong maybe there isn't one single true religion but why might people be inclined to believe that in my opinion uh it's 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 fear and it's an un unwillingness to um to acknowledge how little we know and i used an example i i think it might have been my last video or maybe it was one of my, my live streams on my other channel it might have been just between us i recently mentioned this example of, of someone who was in a situation where they they thought if i had a gun i would have been a lot safer and she said she used to be anti-gun and i thought to myself well there are other things other than guns that might have protected you from that situation did you want to use your imagination and say you know what if i had this instead what if i had an alternative to a gun that's i think what the problem is is people don't people think it's either you're completely unarmed and helpless or you have a gun and that's a really weird situation to put yourself in it isn't one or the other it's sort of like how people think you're either a christian or you're an atheist or you're either this religion or you're that you know people don't realize they're there are other options. You can use your imagination. It's okay to use your imagination. That's what you're here for. So think about it. Is drawing a, is a, is choosing a gun really the best alternative? Um, probably not. I could give you a bunch of gun alternatives that would keep you just as safe and actually more safe because there's less room for a accidentally killing somebody who you maybe didn't need to kill or didn't want to kill there's a lot of reasons that guns are unsafe i'm not going to get into that today because it's unrelated topic um i have talked about it on this channel before not in not in this series i might do an episode about it maybe next week but um i think it deserves its own episode for sure so my point is there are other options and people are just so quick to say no this is what i need people do the same thing with religion people do the same thing with beliefs and yet there's no reason for it so um what happens when we die let's get into the actual question how does it work well basically you are a spiritual being having a human experience and because of that um you are kind of in a stage of evolution i think of it as like the light and then the dark and the reason that I, I have to categorize those in my mind is because I think we can all agree that some situations reek of dark energy. You walk into a place where a bunch of people have died, a house where there have been a bunch of murders, or you know people have practiced satanic rituals, or there's been a lot of really toxic, dark behavior going on there. You, you can't deny that. Even something as simple as somebody coming home from work and being in a foul mood and then the whole mood in the house changes you can't deny the shift in energy and therefore the opposite is also true there's positivity there's light so there's there's light and there's dark in the world and it's just a question of where you are and i think of it as if you're in the flow of things if you're acknowledging that the universe is this grand um design that you can be part of and work with that you are part of you know it's just reality 
you wouldn't exist without the universe. That's what you're made of. That's how you exist. That's what you are. And yet some people detach from that reality and think of themselves as separate, think of the universe as an enemy, and then the dark kind of gets a hold on them and they become really starved because they're, you know, it's the absence of energy, the absence of light. Even though it's still what they are, they still need it. So they're going to be starving, sort of like how, um, you know, someone can can be an ethical, you know, ethically behaved person making moral and ethical decisions. And then there's someone who steals and they feel entitled to take, you know, because they still need to eat. They may have chosen, no, screw this. I'm not going to be part of the system. But then they're like, but actually, I still need things the system offers. I still need food and I still need water and a roof over my head. So I'm just going to take it from you. And they feel entitled to do that. Now, I'm not saying in speaking of like real life, that there is no reason to hate the way things work, that I have no sympathy for like homeless people. I completely get it. They are coming at you and making it really hard to afford a home. You literally cannot afford to live if you are single and don't have any friends or roommates and you're working a minimum wage job. It's unlivable. Um, you would need to be working two jobs or have two people paying the rent or something, you know, and even even then it can still be hard to keep up with. You have to be like ridiculously smart and determined when it comes to spending money and not everyone is. And that should, there should be room for that. But there isn't because we live in a world where, like I mentioned, people like to take advantage of each other and control each other. And the rich, the people who have all the money, you make their money. The, the you know, the middle class, I don't believe in the poor. There's, there's a, the rich and the poor. There's no such thing as the middle class. Um, people that the middle class, the middle class considers poor are really just there to kind of scare the shit out of them, make them think, oh God, I don't, I don't want to end up like that. You already are like that. Don't you realize you're like one, one wrong move away from that? That's just what keeps you doing all the work. Um, so, you know, the people who are like actually considered poor, they're just people who <laughs> are a little bit further down from the middle class, but it's really a, a battle of the rich and the poor. You're either doing the work for the poor or doing the work for the rich, or you, you feel the, the brutality of not working for them and making them richer. And that's all you're really doing. You aren't working to support each other and support yourselves. You're working to support rich people, make the rich richer, and make the poor more uncomfortable and have a hard, harder time living and getting by. And that's really messed up. But regardless, um, there are there is always free will and there's always the choice to put in energy into doing the right thing. So even though you can say we're in an oppressive system that's working against us, you can blame the system all you want. You can blame outside circumstances all you want and say that it's working against you. But you still have an individual responsibility to do what you know is right. You know, you're not responsible for making everything happen a certain way. You're only responsible for yourself. That's all you can control. So you have a life contract. This is another aspect of the afterlife. Um, you come to earth to do work. So basically what you do is, you know, in your, your existence in the universe, just your, your being, your soul, you're from the light originally. And the light is, you know, where every, everything and everyone is from. And people who are kind of in, you know, in the dark and just other entities and energies that are in the dark don't realize that they need the light, which is why I was using the example of like, people who act like they don't need to be part of the system and treat each other right, but then they still need things from each other. So they just steal other people's time, energy, attention. You know, there's hobosexuals, which is like a term for people who literally just get into relationships to take from that person. And they're basically like homeless without them. And they just go in and they're just like, oh, you know, it's, it's so nice. And they'll, they'll lie and they'll be like, oh, I'm fine. No, you're not. Um, I, I have a job and it's like barely a job and, you know, they're, they're just looking to take advantage of you. People do this. And that's kind of a metaphor for like what goes on in the afterlife is the dark and the light. So the light ha actually is f working with the flow of things, has the food source, and the dark is constantly taking and taking and taking from that. So you don't want to become part of that. You have to acknowledge that you're part of the light. It is, it is a reality. It's where you came from. And when you're in that system of the light, you're just energy. Your body is just a meat suit. This, this isn't part of it. I'm talking about you, who you really are. So you're in the light and you're thinking about how you can grow, learn, evolve, 
and you realize that in order to continue growing, you have to go through different experiences. The human experience is one of infinite experiences that you can have, but um, I don't know. I don't know for sure that it's infinite. There might be a point where you reach a time when you no longer need more experience to learn, but it becomes more about giving, becomes more about being of assistance. I'm not really entirely sure how that works, but what I do know is that the human experience is, I would rank it if you're thinking of it, you know, if I say infinite, then it doesn't really make sense for there to be grades. But if you think of it like a school where there's like 12 grades, the human experience would be like first grade. <laughs> it's a very low level experience where we're learning pretty basic, you know, f foundational lessons that, you know, in the grand scheme of things don't really seem, you know, it seems obvious. It's like just learning to play nice learning to be respectful and we feel like these lessons are profound when we learn them we're like wow it's amazing but really it's like it should have it should just be common sense but you got to get there eventually you got to start somewhere so you can't be hard on yourself and feel like you should all you should have already known these things because you don't and there's nothing you can do about that so don't judge yourself but just keep going um and you know, the reason that we have the human experience is to learn lessons, so we have a map of what specifically we're going to learn and a timeline with deadlines. There's certain work that needs to be done, and this involves other people too, because a big part of this is our, our relationships, our interactions with other people. So there are certain people that, you know, we reincarnate and we, we're like going to have a relationship with this person. We're going to have different relationships throughout our lives, and it's very important because of the fact that it involves other people that we make certain decisions before the deadline. So you have about, I don't know, five or six pivotal points in your life where, you know, depending on how old you are, you might, you probably already had a couple and you could look back and realize a, a moment in your life, a year where you had to make a really huge change and a really big decision. And in the two years leading up to that, there would have been a lot of making room for that change and like de detoxing sort of. But if you don't do that, then you're going to notice that it's something's not going right. You're going to you're going to feel like you're in trouble. You're going to feel like you've been neglecting something you were supposed to do and it's not going to be a good feeling. Um and it's going to become more and more uncomfortable to neglect to make the changes that you were told to make that you knew you were supposed to make. But it is okay. If you miss the deadline, it, you're just going to have to do it again when you reincarnate, so it's just going to be spillover work. You don't want to have a ton of that, but unfortunately, most people do because people are not good at keeping up with what's in their life contract. I would estimate maybe like, I don't know, 15 to 20 percent of people, if even, are actually living within their life contract and making the, the changes when they need to be made. Most people are missing their deadlines and they're just reincarnating over and over and over again with a bunch of spillover work and a bunch of, you know, karmic debt that they owe other people who they've screwed over and made bad fear-based decisions. And uh, that's just kind of how it works. So you just keep, you know, you keep reincarnating until eventually you get it. And eventually, if you've reincarnated enough times, you've actually done the work and made the right decisions and learned the lessons. People will notice. People will tell you you're an old soul. Um, eventually, you'll reach a point where you no longer need to reincarnate as a human. You can go on to whatever's next. There's something else. There's more. But um, that's that's really what it is. That's And Defending Your Life, the movie, perfectly reflects that, in my opinion. Um, so it's just about going on to what's more, what's next and learning the human experience lessons. But what happens when you die is basically you have you have a choice. You Your energy is separate from your body. Um, it, it's hard to explain how it feels. It's a little bit like, um, like going to sleep. It's a little bit like having, having a dream. Um, you know, people go back and forth. People go to the afterlife. People kind of play both sides of the fence. Um, when they're uh, when they're close to death, or if they're like in a coma, or if they have certain mental conditions, they'll they'll go back and forth, and they won't even fully be here all the time. Um, we we go to different dimensions and do other work in our dreams. The, there's all sorts of stuff going on. It's not as simple as you're here and then you die and then you go somewhere else. It's it's because it's just all of it is just energy, and it's just all one big experience that you're having. So it's 
it's a lot messier than that. It, it helps if you think of time as an illusion. Time and space are kind of an illusion. Um, so, you, you know, it, it's hard to explain how it feels, but it is a little bit like going to sleep. And you don't really fully understand what happened right away. But depending on, you know, the way that you felt, the way that you behaved when you were alive, you might hold on to your ego, fear and control. And then you would stay earthbound, kind of just like an invisible person, holding on to that weight. Um, or you might let go of that and go into the light where you'll continue to work and you go over what you learned, didn't learn, you'll reincarnate. If you commit suicide, um, it's kind of the same thing. Usually when you commit suicide, you just, you can take a little bit of a break before you reincarnate. But most of the time, people who commit suicide are not earthbound. They usually were ready to cross over and that, you know, you, I can't blame them. Life is hard, but you're not, you're still not getting out of it. You know, you're always going to have the work to do, which is kind of nice if you think about it. There's an option. You, you have the option to continue. Um, you wanted a game over, but you were given some extra lives and that's a good thing. You get the choice to continue going. You can stay stuck all you want um, and you may be stressed out by the fact that there's more to go but there's nothing you can do to change the fact that there's more. But it's okay. You're not alone. You have support. You have a team supporting you. Your ancestors, guides, angels. Guides are just, um, it's a job. Any Anybody in anything can technically be a guide, unless it's a living human. I don't think hu living humans can be guides, but anything on, on the other side, so to speak, can be a guide. An angel, however, is a specific species. It's different than just a job. Um, but, but they're there and they're supporting you all the time. And, you know, even though it gets hard sometimes, and I understand, um, I think some people even, uh, you know, if I'm being honest, this is unrelated, but I think some people probably put suicide in their life contract because of how it impacts other people. Um, and the, you know, the way that it can help other people learn and grow, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't assume that that's the case. You know, it's safer to just keep going and keep trying. But if it makes you feel better, if you know someone who committed suicide, that might put your mind at ease. Um, you could also always book a psychic reading. I even offer those myself if you want to book with me, but you can book with anybody. Um, I would recommend booking with someone through the Ivy League Psychic Academy. Either way, if not me, Ivy herself or one of her other students. Um, because, you know, a lot of other mediums honestly don't know what they're doing. and They might just want to take your money, so... I would recommend the someone who was trained in the same course that I was, because I, I, I actually know that in and out, and I know that it's entirely about helping people and telling people what they need to hear. And I have connected people with their, their um, deceased loved ones before. So just whatever puts your mind at ease. But if you're considering suicide, I would highly recommend looking at other options because it's not going to get you out of doing your work. It's just going to you know, set you back a little bit, but it's okay. You're still going to have the option to continue. So you're not going to completely screw yourself over if you're one of those people who believes that if you commit suicide, you go to hell forever or you're punished in some way. That's not how it works. Um, but anyway, it also is important to note some people do die young on purpose that, you know, everybody has death points where it's highly likely that you're going to die. Most of them are negotiable, but obviously you're going to have to go eventually. Um, but everybody has death points. And some people, you know, have these these points in their life where they're they're going to die, and it's because of how it's going to affect the people around them. And maybe, in a really good case, maybe they just drew up a short life contract in the first place because they knew that they didn't have much else to do, and they just wanted to get it done real quick and then be out of here. And I totally understand that too. It doesn't mean they committed suicide, it just means they established circumstances to result in their death. Maybe they got in a car accident or something. So I know people who've died at, you know, young or untimely. I don't think it was untimely. I think it was when they were ready to go. Um, it doesn't even mean they aren't going to reincarnate again, but that was, that was it. As that person, that was their, their goal. So um, hopefully this helps for people who are grieving, people who know people who've died, um, and who just are wondering what happens. What happens when you die? How does that work? Um... It's, it's worth looking at, it's worth exploring, and, you know, 
I, I, I would never channel an Earthbound. Most of the time, they're not. They've gone into the light. And like I said, time is an illusion, so it doesn't matter if they've reincarnated. I, you can always channel them if you're looking to. Um, so, it, but, they, but they're not like constantly watching you. They will show up. They'll leave you signs and messages. They'll, you know, maybe you look at a bird and it's them. They can just jump into a bird, um, something like that. They'll put a song on the radio. They, they can mess with electronics. There's all sorts of different ways that they can communicate, but they have to kind of learn a new language. So appreciate what you're given. Know that they aren't constantly there, but they are there quite a bit, um, especially if they really cared about you. But who's there all the time is usually your guides. So, you know, a lot of people try to say that it's, oh, my, my, my grandma's always with me. It's probably not your grandma that's always with you. Maybe she was with you for like a year after she passed, but you know, she's she's got other stuff to do. She'll check in with you, but it's just like someone who goes goes away to college. It's like, you know, they're not gonna call you every day you know, <laughs> um, it's eventually they're just gonna check in once in a while. So that's a good way to think of it. Um, I think I've described generally what it looks like, what happens, how it works, and even some extra bits of information that I probably didn't need to add, but I did anyway. Um, if I'm missing anything, let me know in the comments if you have any further questions, but I think I generally covered how, how the afterlife works. So yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. I will see you, uh, I'll see you on Sunday and next Friday. So have a great rest of your day or night. If you're watching the premiere, I assume it's night, although you could be somewhere in the world where it isn't. So that's why I always say day or night. I don't know when you're watching and I don't know where you're watching. But hey, time and space is an illusion, so what does it matter? <laughs> um, obviously, if you disagree with me on anything, if any of this contradicts your belief system, that's totally fine. But don't get emotional and say, "Hey, I don't, I don't agree with this." So, you know, you're talking about these things like it's facts, and I don't, I, and I, I don't believe. Okay, if we're gonna be talking about facts, you need to start presenting some facts. So if you disagree with me and you want to have that conversation, bring logic and facts to the table. Okay, and we can have that discussion. Because um, I'm not going to be rude. I'm not going to be disrespectful. You need to just be willing to have a logical discussion with me about it. I could even bring you onto the channel and we could have a debate. But I don't mind having a little comment debate either. So have, have a good day or night. I doubt anybody's really going to comment on this because hardly anybody watches my videos anyway. But um, just just wanted to put it out there in case people do watch this at some point in the future. <sighs> Yeah, um, I appreciate every like, comment, and subscription, by the way, because I'm trying to grow my channel, and it's YouTube's always trying to screw me out of it, so every bit of interaction helps. Helps the algorithm, I think. I hope. Um, thank you for watching. <laughs>